Are you healing your child from autism? In the science world, we call it optimal outcome. Are you giving your child a lot of supplements? Do you wonder if they even work? Well then, this video is definitely for you. Hi, I'm Teresa Lyons, creator of Navigating Autism and Eat to Heal Autism. And in this week's Ask Dr. Lyons video, I talk all about achieving an optimal outcome by targeting comorbidities of autism. This week, we're gonna look at cobalamin also known as vitamin B12. So if that's what you're interested in, then keep watching. We'll go to the science right now. Autism comorbidity treatment for optimal outcomes. So for healing autism, you really need to keep in mind comorbidities that your child has in addition to their autism diagnosis. Comorbidities are defined as the simultaneous presence of two chronic diseases or conditions in a patient. And treatments for many of these comorbidities are well known, therefore there is no reason at all for your child to suffer with certain comorbidities. Here's a list of autism comorbidities that are very well accepted in the medical community of autism. Seizure and epilepsy, neurotransmitter disorders, sleep disorders, metabolic disorders, and today we'll go over cobalamin, immune disorders, and gastrointestinal disorders. So these are comorbidities that co-occur with autism very commonly. And if your child has any of these comorbidities, they do need to be addressed while healing autism. Metabolic disorders. So today we're gonna to cover the second of six metabolic disorders, cobalamin. What is cobalamin? Cobalamin is more commonly known as vitamin B12, so you can hear that term used interchangeably, cobalamin and vitamin B12. B vitamins are water soluble, meaning they are excreted in urine if not used by the body. Vitamin B12 doesn't just work in one aspect of the body. It is involved in many aspects of proper functioning of our bodies. And they also work synergistically. So vitamin B12 works closely with vitamin B9, also known as folate. And they work together synergistically in many aspects, such as red blood cell synthesis and iron utilization. Reduced levels lead to increased micronucleus formation and reduced telomere length, respectively. And that is all related to problems with DNA methylation. So I'm sure you've heard of methylation before. It's a big topic in the autism community. And you can see how vitamin B12 works with other vitamins in our body for proper DNA methylation. I do have another video specifically on folate. So if you're very interested in folate, folic acid and folinic acid, then please check out that video as well. But these are separate comorbidities. Vitamin B12 works synergistically with vitamin B9, but there are certain aspects to each of those vitamins that work independently. Therefore, they are separated into two different metabolic disorders. So it's important to be able to understand that they are separate metabolic disorders, but they do work closely together, both those vitamins. So if you are interested in learning more about vitamin B9, which is known as folate, folinic acid and folic acid, please check out my other video on YouTube about folate. What certain aspects of behavior would indicate that your child might need vitamin B12 supplementation? Many who are deficient in vitamin B12 experience anemia and depression, neurological impairments, dementia, fatigue or overall weakness, immune deficiency, inflammation of the tongue. So if your child's tongue is red and swollen, uh, tongue is a very good indicator of vitamin B12 deficiency. Improvements in those with autism from vitamin B12 are typically increases in speech and social interactions, as well as better sensory processing of the environment. Vitamin B12 in autism. Research has shown that blood levels of vitamin B12 are inconsistent as a group. So there's research in the autism population that show increased levels as well as those that have decreased levels. However, 
when you look at cerebral levels of cobalamin, vitamin B12, they're more consistently found to be deficient in those with autism. And that makes sense because a lot of times somebody could have normal levels of vitamin B12, but the actual mechanisms involved in the body's processing of it doesn't work. And therefore, let's say in, in the brain, that's why it'll be consistently shown as those with autism having lower levels in the brain. Whereas in the blood, it's inconsistent. So there could be increased and decreased in those with autism. But if you look at more the functionality as to where the body is using the vitamin B12, that's where the research has shown more consistent data. Many choose methylated vitamin B12 shots. Those are prescription only. You need to get those from your doctor. Although there is oral methylcobalamin that can be used. Common side effects of vitamin B12, usually the shots is hyperactivity, although it certainly could be seen with the oral methylcobalamin. And now here's kind of like a little advanced move. So if you're working with a healthcare practitioner that really knows autism and really knows metabolic disorders and really knows what to do, then you might see this combination of using DMG, TMG, folinic acid, and vitamin B12 shots. And again, they're used in combination to target different methylation issues. So let's look at some of the research that has been published using cobalamin treatment. So first I'll show an eight week double blind placebo controlled clinical trial that found methylcobalamin injections, so methyl vitamin B12 injections, improved their clinician rated score. And results also showed that clinically measured cellular methylation capacity increased. So clinicians saw a better behavior as well as different lab tests measuring methylation capacity, that was also improved. And this was just with only vitamin B12 injections for eight weeks. Now a three month clinical trial studied oral folinic acid along with vitamin B12 injections showed glutathione metabolism normalized. There was also an average improvement in skills of 7.7 .7 months. So when you measure a child, they should have certain skills. Within this three month clinical trial, there was an improvement in certain skills and it was a 7.7 .7 month improvement. Again, over a three month time period. That's pretty impressive results. There was also improvement in the expressive communication, personal and domestic daily living skills, interpersonal play, leisure, and coping social skills. So that was three months, and this was, again, a little bit of an advanced move, so it's looking at folinic acid and methyl vitamin B12 injections. And you can see when there's that combination of supplements, you get a different result. So the results here showed improvement in glutathione metabolism. Now glutathione influences detoxification, inflammation, immune response, transport of nutrients across membranes, and much, much more. So you can see the first clinical trial only did the vitamin B12 injections, and there was an improvement in the clinically measured cellular methylation capacity, whereas this three-month clinical trial that looked at oral folinic acid and methyl vitamin B12 injections, that showed an improvement in glutathione. So it's really important to work with a healthcare practitioner that can really understand what comorbidity your child has so that the right supplements can be matched up. Now, the best way to work with a healthcare practitioner who is this knowledgeable in being able to really prescribe and recommend supplements that target these comorbidities for your child, the best way to start working with them is if your child has the optimal diet for them. So here, this is some research showing that there was a dietary vitamin B12 deficiency identified in three children with autism who also had optic neuropathy, so they were losing sight. This was a study done on three children, but all three children had severe food selectivity, resulting in low vitamin B12 levels. They were self-selecting to some very poor, high-carb foods. 
So the treatment that was given to these children was the vitamin B12 shots, and it resulted in improvement of visual functioning in all three children. Food selectivity, a known complication of autism, and it can result in vitamin deficiency that can cause visual loss and optic atrophy. So if your child is not eating a well-balanced diet, it's really important to get them started on the right special diet for them because autism comorbidities can be healed and treated and it is much more efficient and much easier when your child is eating an optimal diet for them. So please, if you wanna heal autism, the best first step is making sure your child is eating a well-balanced diet. And it's a lot easier than you think to do that. And here are some references in case you want to do further reading.